Listen to these words from Philippians chapter 4. The Apostle Paul is, is reflecting on his life. He's talking to people who have actually brought him a gift. They've shown concern for him by bringing a gift to help him with his ministry because he was struggling financially. So he says, I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. This is Philippians chapter 4, beginning verse 10. He says, you renewed your concern, meaning you were able to give to me and help with my ministry. Indeed, you were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. You couldn't give then, but now you've just been able to give a little bit and help my ministry. I am not saying this because I am in need. For I have learned, listen closely, I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. Who? I've learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I've been in both places. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry. I've experienced both, he says. Whether living in plenty or in want. I've been in both places. And here's the key, verse 13. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. It's about who gives you strength. It's about knowing Jesus. Because when you come to the cross, when you receive Jesus' grace, when you confess your sins, and you receive the, the gift of Jesus, not only are your sins washed away, but God moves into you by his Holy Spirit. And the Bible says every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms becomes ours. And on top of that, God gives us a lot of stuff. God provides in amazing, staggering, beautiful ways for us. We just don't notice it a lot of times as we're looking at what other people have. But God has been good. So can you proclaim, I have enough. More stuff won't make me more happy. That's a scary thing to say, I'm good. But can I tell you something? It's not about laziness. If you want the best life, the greatest joy, the deepest happiness, and the most meaning in your life, you will learn contentment right where you are right now. You'll learn to say, I have enough, and more stuff won't make me more happy. Because when you decide to be content where you are right now, you'll be content. But if, you, if your mindset is this, I will be content, and I will be happy once I have fill in the blank. That car, this car, that experience, whatever it is. Once I have that, that amount of money, that amount of money saved, then I'll be content and happy. Then it's always going to be one step away. But when you learn to be content now, it's powerful. Because if you're content where you are right now, guess what? If God happens to give you more, you'll still be content. And if you're content with what you have right now, and God chooses to give you less, you'll still be content. Why? Because your contentment's not based on how much you have. But it's based on knowing Jesus. Our first three years of marriage, I didn't, I, I didn't feel poor. I didn't feel like we lived below the poverty line. I felt like we had everything we needed. I had, I had a wife who loved me. And we didn't, we didn't know how we were going to pay for lots of stuff. When we got married, um, we, the first thing we bought together as a couple was a bed. Because I had a, like, a little, like a little kid single bed. Because I never had cause or need for anything larger. And Sherry had like a little kid single bed. And I'm going to date myself right here, but we weren't, going to go, we weren't going to go, I love Lucy, Ricky, and Lucy Ricardo with two single beds and a nightstand between them. I don't even know how that works, you know. Uh, you know we weren't going to do that. We wanted actually a bed big enough for us to, to sleep in together because we were married. And so we actually bought a bed. And I think for three or four years, we paid about $15 a month because we couldn't afford a bed. But, but we had everything. And 33 years later, we still have everything. Now we have two little separate beds. No, that's not true. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that in the first service. It just struck me. Wouldn't that be funny? But it's not true. Uh, that's not true at all.